Hey everybody, bit of a channel update. I decided I'd make this its own video, rather than part of a Monday vlog, mostly because the two next Monday vlogs, like the one that just happened, will have been on Christmas, and then the next one's New Year's, I don't want to depress you on either of those days. So I've got some bad news, but I have some good news, thankfully. We'll start with the bad news, because that's just the order that this goes, is that I am no longer a member of ShoddyCast. I know it sucks, because I did one video on there, and everybody seemed to really, really like it. Uh, I'm really proud of how well that video did on the gunplay in Fallout 3, mostly. I think it's the second most viewed video they've had in the last year? The only one who beat me is Bob, uh, Bob Wolf of the Wolf Den, so I'm really happy with that. I don't want to go into it too deep because nothing is super public on it yet, but I do need to say that I'm not in it because, you know, transparency is really important that I keep you guys informed on everything. The super basic and super short version of it is just that ShoddyCast is restructuring, and part of that is a lot of people are being let go. It's essentially downsizing, I guess you would call it, more of going back into a for fun hobby thing. Unfortunately, that means that I'm gone from it. It really sucks too that this would happen so soon before Christmas. This happened about a week, week and a half ago. Um, and I've just kind of been planning out what I'm doing since then. I was actually working on a few shoddy cast videos when it happened. It was a really unfortunate timing. What I will say though is before anyone jumps to any conclusion about shoddy cast being awful, it's not. Uh, e even the guy who essentially fired me, the, the, the owner, is a really, really nice guy. He's treated me beyond fairly my entire time there. And even after he let me go, um, I asked him if we could have a call sometime to discuss it, and he was totally up for it, and we had a great time in the call talking for a few hours just about life in general and that. And in fact, um, he was so hopeful on me that I'm, he thinks that I'm pretty good, and I think that I'm okay, uh, that he actually introduced me to another channel called Fudge Muppet. Before I get into that, I want to talk about a little bit of my time with ShoddyCast. Um, I first sent my, I guess you would call it my resume, to ShoddyCast, I applied for ShoddyCast uh, back when Bob joined them. I hadn't heard of ShoddyCast before that, but I was friends with Bob Wolf, and he said that he joined them. He started making a series called The Art over there. So I went to their page and I saw they had an application page. So I sent in an application, and um, a few months later, I ended up hearing back from them, and that's how, you know, they wanted me to do a tryout video, and that's the one that ended up airing. I anticipated that video would get 50,000 to 70,000 views. I thought it would be on the lower end of what that channel gets because, you know, I'm a new personality coming in. And, you know, I've been doing YouTube for seven years, seven and a half, something like that. Video a day for six years now, something like that. And I've always wondered, you know, is part of the reason why I don't have a whole lot of views on my, on my um, videos that I put out is it because it's just not good enough? And that's why that video was kind of vindication for me of I make this video, it didn't take long. It was like two days. Honestly, it's like one of the quickest turnaround videos I ever did because I wanted to prove that I had work ethic. So I just worked day and night for two days on that gunplay video. And it was a short video, but you know, shorts not bad, shorts hey, it's very small investment to go watch the video because, you know, if it ends up not being that good, it was five minutes, whatever. So the video did very, very well. Uh, I believe it is just about to hit 500,000 views. Um, I didn't expect that at all. I didn't even think I was going to get 100,000 views. Um, and the average video in there gets uh, 300,000 or more, depending on what series it is, how popular of a series it is. So I did really, really, really well. Um, none of us expected that. I was undershooting a bit. The owner thought it was going to do a bit better than I thought it was, but neither of us thought it was going to do that well. So it was kind of vindication for me that no, I am good enough. I do good enough videos. I just need to, I guess, get better at marketing. I need to get my videos in front of the people who want to see them. People want to see the videos. I just have to help them find it, you know? Anyway, so we fast forward all these months and everything, and the shoddy cast thing is happening, I'm being let go from that. But the owner said, hey, I know this other channel that does a lot of Bethesda stuff that's similar, but seems to be more in the style of your gunplay video. And I'm like, okay, 
like, what is it? And they say, Fudge Muppin. He tells me about it a little bit. How it's these three Australian guys do a channel like that. He linked it to me. I checked it out and everything. And he said he's going to put in a good word for me and introduce me. So that's how I met Fudge Muppet. Uh, I don't want to go super into detail on that just because we've only really started discussions on, hey, maybe they're okay with adding a person and everything. All that's in the works right now is I've written a script for a video that I think would do quite well and I've sent it off to Michael. He seems to be cool with it, so sometime after this Christmas break, he's gonna do a voiceover and I'm going to be the editor of it. So I'm going to have written the script and done the editing. He will be the personality attached to it. And then we're gonna air that video over on their channel and just see what happens from there. Maybe it'll totally bomb and I'll completely blow it and they're not interested in hiring me. And that's fine. If I don't do good, I don't do good. And maybe it'll end up being awesome and farther down the line, I'll be an actual named faced personality on their channel. Who knows? We, we don't know what's gonna go on with it really. I don't wanna jump the gun and go saying like, hey, I'm a member of Fudge Muppet, cause I'm not. I'm some guy freelancing with some editing and a script and everything. But I'm hopeful that I'll do pretty well. Um, I'm pretty happy with the script and it seems like Michael's pretty happy with the script. I worry that I've maybe made it slightly too long for an introductory video, but at the same time, if it's not my personality attached to it, I don't need to worry about that so much because it's more of the length of a video they would normally do. Whereas if it were me voicing it, I would rather it be a shorter video for the first one. So again, it's a low barrier to entry. People can get warmed up to me in a very short video that's easy to digest. One of the challenges I found in writing the script so far, and maybe the script isn't 100% finished, we'll, we'll see if he sends it back and wants more revisions or anything, but we seem to be pretty happy with it right now. One of the big things that was difficult for me writing the script is that I've actually never written a script in somebody else's voice before. With all the work that I've done on YouTube, anytime that I have to actually write a script for something, which is fairly rare actually, I, you know, I specialize in improv comedy, um, it's always been me writing something for myself to read so I can really write it in my own voice. Whereas with this, not only am I writing it in the voice of I don't know who, because I don't know if it's Michael, Drew, or Scott who's going to be voicing the video, but these are also guys that I've just met. I mean, I've only talked to Michael, and I've only been watching the channel for about a week. I've been really binging a lot of the videos to try and understand, like, who these guys are, what are their personalities, what are their senses of humor. And really, it's, I have to make the script... Uh, generic enough in my wording of things that they can easily just change the little bits to be more in line with their speech patterns, but also give it some flavor. I don't want it to be totally dry. That wasn't a pun, by the way. Also, I want it to be reasonably in the style of their channel because, you know, I want it to not completely stand out like a sore thumb. At the same time, I need to do my thing because my video over on Shottycast did so well because of the things that I do, you know? It's my editing project. It's like you'll see from some of the theory videos on Geek Remix that I was the editor for. They have a drastically different style and yet people really, really like them. Because I have a certain comfort zone of what I'm especially good at and I'm always expanding that every single video because I never do a heavily edited video like that where I don't suddenly get a really, like an idea I really like. I'm like, I really like this idea, but I'm not 100% sure on how to do it. And so by messing around and looking at some tutorials and stuff, I end up discovering some kind of new thing and how to do it. And it's just, you know, expanding the toolbox as an editor of new things that I've learned how to do over the years. And that's, that's how you learn this stuff, really is just experience of just doing it over and over and over and learning new things each and every time. And so I want to have a certain amount of things that are uniquely me in there, things that I have learned and I know from experience do very well. For instance, near the end of the video, this is something they don't normally do. They don't have much focus on their outro. They mostly, they say their name and tell the person to, you know, have a nice day or see you next time or something, and then it's done. Not how I do it. And this is something that I, I have seen from experience that I can really do some good with. I do a thing where I show you how to ring the subscriber bell because not everybody knows how that works. I can do a little gag on it. I know how to edit the code on the, um, on the Chrome page to make it look 
like the the name of the video is different. I can do some kind of funny little gag there for the people who notice that, and I can I can edit it in to make it look like you're watching the video that you're already watching, even though that's impossible. And I know a little trick on how to do that. I did that in my gunplay video, just little Easter eggs for in case you notice them, little treats to watch till the end for. I know how to set up a really nice looking end card, and that would help get people to binge watch their channel more, because then they have that really convenient link and it will automatically suggest something very similar that they might like on the channel and maybe they'll end up binging when they otherwise weren't going to. Then, as you've seen from some of the Geek Remix theories that I was the editor for, like the Penis Theory or the uh, Hell Valley Skytree one, I'm really into animating otherwise static objects. Whenever I can't get some gameplay footage that I think would really carry it through strongly, I lean on art assets. The reason I do this is because if you've seen gameplay footage of the game, you know what to expect. You understand that the camera is panning this way and it is in this game, and thus you will see more of that thing. But when I have these animated pictures come in and do things, even if it's not a whole lot, or even if it's a static art asset that I've created, it's outside of the world of the game. It's something to garner interest because you couldn't have possibly seen that coming. And that itself will make it a little bit more interesting to watch. How heavily I rely on that, of course, entirely depends on the video, and usually the more comedic it is, the more I'll do that, whereas these videos aren't really pure comedy. A lot of it is talking about lore or talking about in-game mechanics or talking about what they would do to improve something. Uh, not so much comedy, although definitely they're humorous elements. So how much I'll get to use that, I don't know. But we'll see as my style with theirs matures and everything. Because, you know, this is my first time writing a script for them. It's gonna be my first time editing for them. So if this ends up going well and this ends up continuing, then, you know, over time you'll see the style adapt and everything into something that every party is more comfortable with. So that's all I really had to say, is that, uh, no shoddy cast anymore, bit of a bummer, but I'm pretty hopeful for this thing with uh, Fudge Muppet. Don't want to get my hopes up too high, nobody get your hopes up too high, just because you never know how things are going to go. Uh, but I've been having a lot of fun talking with Michael, I'm pretty hopeful on the whole thing, and I'm really excited to get the voice lines in so I can start editing this thing. Just gotta, I've also got to clear up some room on my hard drive so I can record a bunch of footage. If you don't know, I record all of my own footage. Um, so that's a very lengthy process, but I think my videos come out a lot better because of that. I'm going to go back to working on editing some of this uh, World of Warcraft Burning Crusade footage that I have. I've got this big run through we did for three hours of the dead mines. Yes, we're finally completing the dead mines. I got to go get this edited. So thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, have a nice day.